Hi, I'm Anjali Bamani. And I'm Julia Bianco. And we are so excited to be bringing you our new creative baby, the Character Select Podcast. 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 <laughs> Are you excited? Because I am really excited. I'm so excited that I'm clearly a little bit slap happy. I'm I'm over the moon. Uh, uh, this is a passion project, and I'm just excited, well, to have an excuse to see you. That is for sure. I feel the same way now. Uh, the only way, I say this often, the only way I get to see my friends is if I'm working with them. And so now we have created an excuse to see each other all the time. All the time. But why are we here to see you guys? That's more important. Um, we would love to tell you a little bit about this podcast and why on earth does the world need another podcast and specifically this one so yeah. first of all like any great superhero story <laughs> we should discuss our origin story it was six o'clock in the morning on a hazy morning in los angeles when we both turned on our computers <laughs> to join the zoom for the <laughs> our computers go <laughs> To join the Zoom for the jury for the BAFTA Games Awards to select the nominees for the best supporting performance in a game. And it was six o'clock in the morning, and I think both of us were uh, a little bit uh, not thrilled that we had to do this at six o'clock in the morning until we saw each other's faces and we knew that we were going to have a friendly face on this Zoom. But there were so many other friendly faces on this Zoom, and there were other people from all different aspects of the games industry. Sound designers, narrative directors, other casting directors, other actors. There were art s- folks. Art folks, lots of art folks, um, animators. There were people from all aspects of the industry, and we had gathered to discuss these performances and make a very difficult decision to narrow down this long list of incredible nominees. And what struck us both during that conversation, and jump in here if I'm, you know, if I, if, at any moment, <laughs> um, what struck us both about that conversation was the fact that there were so many different aspects that went into what created that great performance so many that didn't have to do necessarily with the actor's performance. Yeah. Things um, things that had to do with the sound design and the animation and how the lines were written, how the character was written. So many things that we hadn't even thought of um, being veterans in this industry. And immediately after the jury, yeah. after this wonderful many hours long conversation that was so respectful and so uplifting... Um, We got on the phone immediately and realized Mm -hmm. we have to do something to let the world know about how much goes into a great performance in games. And specifically how people who maybe are not actors, but also actors, uh, but people who are not actors contribute to that. Um, And thus... The idea for the Character Select podcast was born. Yes, indeed. Yeah, explaining the uh, amalgamation of the performance and and how many different factors go into how that performance plays out, how the audience interacts with that character performance, and and then all the processes kind of going into how these people were even found. Yeah. And each, each individual on that call had such a different perspective from their own unique job. And I think their perspectives that have till this time not really been fully shared in, as it relates to a character performance. Correct. And so that's why we're here. That is absolutely why we're here. This particular podcast is going to be focused on... Yes, talking about our guests, about their entrance into the games industry and their entrance into their particular lanes. But also, we are going to, on every episode, take one performance chosen by our guest, whether a performance that they were involved in or a performance of uh, that they just respect because of seeing it in the industry. We're going to take that performance and talk about what they believe went into that performance that made it so special. Uh, we will hear from actors, from casting directors, from uh, narrative directors, from uh, composers. composers, from people from fans. all walks of this industry, and fans, of course, and players. players. Absolutely from players. And many of our guests 
guests are both players and their particular lane of expertise, which is That's very, true. very exciting, including our first guest, who I'm excited to um, share with you guys when the time is right. Indeed. That's right. That's a little teaser for you. <laughs> Before diving in, maybe we should explain a little bit about why we're qualified to talk oh, yeah. about are, these things. Are we qualified to talk about I these mean, things? I mean, I don't know how qualified I, I would know. consider us possibly subject matter You are experts. definitely a subject matter expert because say- you do a million things for a million games. You guys, you have no idea how much of a wealth of knowledge. She's such a giant wealth of knowledge that she wrote this book. Woo, books. The Art and Business. Oh, sorry, Mikey. The Art and Business of Acting for Video Games. Look at it. Look at it. If you're listening, it's you can't look at it. <laughs> the Art and Business of Acting for Video Games by Julia Bianco Scheffling. Um, if you are interested in game performance, if you are interested in being an actor in video games, you must run, don't walk to get this book or just type really fast because you don't really have to run to your computer necessarily. Well, and you are a subject matter expert on acting, my dear. I know that it sounds crazy, but it's something you may have been doing for your entire my life. My entire life, including pe- when I was three years old and writing plays for my parents in the living room. And people actually pay you to do this. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> my life, An interviewer recently told me that my uh, career is a nerd's fever dream, and I was like, that is accurate, because I'm a big nerd, and... I am enjoying my life. Fun (laughs) is such a vital part of the creative process that I think we forget because as actors going in for the performance, sometimes we think there's so much riding on this one audition. Mm -hmm. And especially if you aren't an actor who gets all those opportunities, it's very easy to to overthink it all. Yes. It's very easy to think, like, I have to do something special. I have to do something different. I have to make a crazy voice or I have to make my voice sound different than it is. And we forget that just by virtue of being a different human being than all the other human beings auditioning for it, you are already unique and your voice is already unique and your vantage point that you will bring to that character is already unique. Um, Which is one of the things I'm excited to talk about during our future episodes of the podcast is what are the unique elements that made something, uh, that made either an actor's performance or made something stand out that maybe weren't things that someone intentionally put in there, mm-hmm. like whether it's the quality of someone's voice or whether it's the story, of, whether it's their own personal background. I think that's that's a really interesting thing to explore. I mean, even just connections to characters that maybe some of our guests had admired before they got to play. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Or, to, or to those worlds or mm-hmm. to those actually game worlds. Um, do you think it's important for people to play the games before they go in to audition or, or uh, to like or to at least have some familiarity with the games because yeah. a lot of times we don't know what game we're auditioning for Correct. especially I, if it's a new one I think it's always helpful for anyone working in the media of games to even if you're not going to play yourself to watch mm-hmm. there's tons of footage now uh, available and especially for story driven games it's not necessarily about the combat um, but it is it's so helpful when you can understand how the environment works, how you can hear multiple lines mm-hmm. triggered in certain mm-hmm. ways or whether they're, you know, fast pace or if it's slow. Right. Just kind of getting the tone and energy of different games. That way, when you see something, you can relate it and say, oh, this is kind of like it might not be the right specific right. game, but you yeah. can get like the tone and the ballpark, like whether you're, um, you know, whether you're auditioning for one multiplayer game or another, Mm -hmm. the fast action Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hero thing can kind of carry you through. And maybe that's going to be a little more larger than life than a a Last of Us or an Uncharted story driven. And whether it is cut scenes, which are very similar to auditioning for television, uh, versus actual gameplay, which is a whole different beast that we will also get into on the podcast. It's, It's... I mean, it's so similar for me to any auditions in any medium, whether I'm auditioning for a play, even if it's a new play, is there a particular tone that I can liken it to? Does Has the writer written, has the playwright mm-hmm. written something else that I can look at? Or, same thing with television auditions. Like, If there's an episode I can look at, great. Or what have the people working on it? There's so many things that you can do before your audition. Um, that can give you a little bit of insight into things. I think people forget, I think actors forget about that um, relationship between what what the person might have created before. Yeah. Because it is a longer cycle and you're not necessarily seeing like a stacked IMDb. Yeah. But it is is wholly relevant. Yeah. And it's, 
because there's so many people working on these games and they don't have like the credibility of this Hollywood mm-hmm. fanciness, um, people don't get told how awesome their work is that often. Well, and also as actors, when we get the audition, sometimes we get zero information besides the sides and we get a code name for the game and we get a code name for the character. We don't get the original art. You are given very little. There have been multiple times, most more often than not, including one situation right now where I just found out uh, what the title (laughs) of the game that we are both working on is. I didn't know what the title was until now. Um, uh, we are given so little that sometimes it really is just a leap of faith in in being like, what little information I have here, I need to make it mine. And not, and that's there's a big distinct distinct. Hello, I'm a voice professional. <laughs> there's a big distinction between making it yours and trying to make something that we think you guys want. Precisely, and I think the biggest mistake is that that people will think that we know what we want Mm -hmm. and that we have it figured out at Mm -hmm. that time, which is absolutely untrue. We know nothing. Mm -hmm. And so when when you're saying we're, it's not that we're withholding the information, we just really don't know it, right? So it's like you don't know the name of the game. It's because the name of the game didn't exist when you got cast. And we don't know. And it was a code name. (laughs) Yeah, and we often don't know who the developers are. We know who maybe, we might know who the company is. We might not. Um, It's just such an intriguing thing to see like, yes, you can do as much research as you can with the little information you're given, but ultimately you have to trust in your own uniqueness and and um, and just you have to trust in your own voice, both mm-hmm. your physical voice and your own voice, you know, all caps, your mm-hmm. own personal voice. Yeah, the perspective is everything. Yeah. Um, there's no one that's going to read a script and analyze it exactly the same as you. Yep. They just aren't because they don't have the same life experience. They don't walk through the world with the same vision that you do, regardless mm-hmm. if you're from the same background or economic background. Like it's – it's uh, Everyone has a different brain. Yeah. And so really it's it's so interesting. Like after all of these classes and all of the uh, teach you how to do all this stuff, really we just want you to be you. Yeah. And it and it may not be your role. And yes. be, you being you may not be the right one for that role. In games, I think there's so much more flexibility and a lot of times, oftentimes we'll have three or four people that could have knocked it out of the park. And, and I'm gonna ask you a question that I already know the answer to, but I want you to say it out loud because I want more people to know the answer. Are there times where you audition someone for a particular role and you're like, I know they're not right for this role, but there's something else that I know that they're right for or that something gets created for that person? I wish I could tell the actual story of um, all the details of what happened, but I recently had an actor who really – stepped out and was themselves in an audition setting and asked to do something a little bit extra and uh, after completing the task and being praised for it, uh, asked if they could do one more Uh, and they ended up changing the game based on the actor's choices and and authenticity in that moment and it was a very uh, memorable audition and everyone in the room will remember it. That must, be, that must be so gratifying as a casting director, too, because so much of your job is just connecting the dots and connecting the dots between what the developers might be looking for or needing and what you know the actors can bring to the table. Well, and I think that's exactly it's what they might be needing. And yeah. I think part of the reason that I'm good at my job is because there is no ego involved in yeah. knowing that I know what they need. Yeah, And I, I think that comes from being a game dev and, and working in game de- development is that we don't we we don't have a set everything. So we're not walking in saying, I need Angelina Jolie on this role. Yeah. Like we walk in saying, OK, we have all of these things. We're all going to work on them and change them and mesh them together and mm-hmm. do this. What works in this scenario? And then when I'm selecting, I don't select. Whereas like a commercial, you'll have 25 people that look exactly the same Mm -hmm, for the mm -hmm. role. I'm selecting a rainbow so that I can capture something that they can grab onto instead of something very specific that I know they want because that's not written. Mm -hmm. So it's just knowing, okay, this person is is a uh, malleable if it, it is something where they need to be able to to go in a lot of different ranges or it's someone that's very specifically authentically accurate for mm-hmm. a specific role or whatever it may be that the focus is on and the priority is on rate 
uh, timing, yeah. all of the things, because these processes are, you know, five to seven years sometimes. So long. <laughs> Do you find, I mean, this is, uh, it feels like such a simplistic question, but I, I, I think there is a more complex answer than the question itself. Do you find there is a, a giant difference between casting voiceover that's purely voiceover and casting for PCAP and mocap? Yeah. Um, yes, there's a pretty large difference in... It's not necessarily that there's a difference in who are getting those roles, but the process for them in terms of what we require for the audition and then what the what the um, clients are looking for and what the developers are looking for. Um, there are a lot of voice actors that got into it without going through traditional acting schools. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so n- not everyone has the body experience, the theater experience that we're looking for. Um Sometimes that doesn't matter, and sometimes people break right out of that, and they're amazing on a stage. Sometimes they have to be poked a little bit more and reminded that even though you're just kind of bringing this performance into a microphone in the booth, you're going to need to be able to open it back up once you're on the PCAP stage. But ultimately what I have found is, you know, there's always a a celebrity uh, here or there or some, some name talent that certain places want. Um, but at the end of the day, they want people who can really just authentically perform because we don't have we don't have costumes, mm-hmm. we don't have makeup, we don't have props. So you've got to be able to do it practically naked. Yeah, you it's, know, in the theater of the mind, theater of as the we mind, like to call in it. those awful suits that are terribly <laughs> embarrassing. But they're the great equalizer they as are. well because everyone looks odd in them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter whether you are tall, short, skinny, large. It does whatever it is. You are. Uh, we, it is the great equalizer. We all look weird mm-hmm. in uh, in PCAP. But to here. be able to be so authentic in that environment, yeah. I mean, that's the stuff. Yeah, that's the stuff. And so it, with with VO, it's a little easier to to be a little bit more surface and and to have a, a great performance that maybe doesn't go super deep or mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. because the material's not even there. Mm. Um, but with PCAP and and um, and mocap, there's a lot more uh, looking at how the you know the voice connects with the body, mm-hmm. um, and then how to get those like really true performances. Um, they still love actors that can do a lo- voice, strong voice work, though, mm-hmm. because while you will be on the PCAP stage doing that, the likelihood is that you will also have, you know, several hundred lines yeah. that you've got to do in the booth yeah. as well. And that's full circle. Going back to what I was telling you, maybe it wasn't on camera, um, but it's why you are such a remarkable example mm-hmm. Uh, is because your ability to carry performance, no matter what the the capture method is. So whether it's on a microphone or whether it's in a theater or whether it's being captured on for television or for movies, like there are TV actors, there are movie actors, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that's not real. Actors, actors should have tools in their tool belt, but there's no reason to limit yourself to the capture. No, absolutely. And, and I, I will say that I'm very grateful that I have had, um, such a broad, you know, set of experiences as far as different capture, you know, different methods of capture, because every single one has informed the other, and ultimately it just proves that it's all about story. Mm-hmm. It's all storytelling and creating a character, and the only difference is, you know, I, I often liken it to speaking different romance languages. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, Spanish is a little easier to learn if you know French, is a little easier to know. Like, they're all a little easier to learn, but they're all completely separate languages mm-hmm. in and of themselves, and you have to learn them. But underneath it all, there is still one root language, and it's the same. It's one root language for all of these different forms is storytelling, mm-hmm. and that the story is king. And being willing to and play. being willing to play, yeah, you got to be willing to even play. On the, even on your language example, because I, I know, mm-hmm. like, I'm very self conscious about speaking other languages because mm-hmm. I'm not really willing to play, and uh, so, yeah. so I, there's definitely something there with like the willingness to put yourself out there in sure. those really awkward environments when. It's like being an actor is one of the most vulnerable things you can do. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also, there's such strength in that vulnerability, like just like Brene Brown would say. <laughs> but there's such strength in that, and there's such um, relief. Um, and I think you see it when you see a performance like that, or you play a game and you feel the, the performance come out. There's such a relief because that person, you can tell that person is being truly authentic. Mm-hmm. You can tell that that moment just opened them up. 
Um, I'm so excited Me to be too. sharing this with all of you and, of course, with you, I Julia. Know. I could it's sit be, here all day. We could sit here all day and talk about this stuff, but we're <laughs> not going to because we're going to head out so that you guys can watch episode one, mm. which we're very excited to introduce you to that guest. So stay tuned to the Character Select Podcast. Like and subscribe. <laughs>